So I think a hot topic right now in medicine is uh, platelet-rich uh, plasma. So we're going to talk about it for dry eye disease and how we can use it not only in dry eye disease but in other things. So we've all heard about autologous serum. Uh, in 84, and we've been doing it for years and years, 84, Dr. Fox demonstrated that uh, beneficial effects of RBCs spun down leaving just uh, serum. Dr. Savoda uh, showed a paper at serum drops for Sjogren's. Uh, Dr. Matsumoto showed serum drops could repair damaged corneal nerves. Uh, these serum drops contain many bioactive mediators, nerve growth factor, vascular endothelial growth factor, uh, that can be neuroprotective. So we've been doing autologous serum for years, um, but uh, with really minimal results. And then all of a sudden, uh, I was taking care of athletes, and some of these athletes were coming in and saying that they uh, were getting PRP. And I was going, what's, what's PRP? And they said, well, we're getting platelet-rich plasma. We're getting it injected into our knees. We're getting it injected uh, into our back. And what we're finding, it's really helping us recover, uh, play longer, extend our careers. So I started thinking, well, let's look at platelet-rich plasma and see if we can make it into a, an eye drop. So in the platelet, you have platelets, thrombocytes, you're, you're very aware of them, play a major role in coagulation. Uh, and here you see a resting uh, platelet and an activated uh, platelet. And when these uh, platelets get activated, they release growth factors and signaling uh, proteins. So what's the difference between PRP and autologous serum? When you get PRP, you're actually getting more of the things that we want and what we've been looking for uh, in terms of uh, nerve growth factor, so helping the nerves, TGFB, VEGF, uh, SIMA7A, uh, platelet-derived uh, growth factor. So it's a more concentrated form of what we've been trying to get uh, in autologous serum. So here's uh, one of the first uh, PRP machines that we tried. So there's a couple of ways that you can derive PRP. You can do it with a centrifuge and then look for the buffy coat and, and in between the red blood cell, the buffy coat and the uh, platelet core uh, plasma, you can actually take uh, a syringe and get that out. When you're talking about an ophthalmology clinic and you're talking about technicians trying to uh, extract uh, PRP from a test tube, it can get a little bit messy uh, now with the laws of what you can do with blood in certain clinics, uh, becomes a problem. So now you're getting these machines that actually all you have to do is just take the blood uh, inject it, uh, put it in a machine, run it through. Uh, there's no taking out of blood. It does it all for you. And then you get this platelet-rich uh, plasma. So this is one of the first machines that we started using uh, when we started doing this about five or six years ago. So there's two ways to get PRP. You could do a, a double centrifuge technique, which is what these machines do. Or you can do the technique that I was talking about single centrifuge and then actually try to extract some of the PRP from that Buffy coat. The double centrifuge seems to work uh, much better in terms of getting real PRP as opposed to doing the, in, you know, the syringe and uh, taking that out. And you're getting better and better and more sophisticated systems of doing uh, this double centrifuge uh, PRP. But we discovered some problems, like autologous serum, when you get autologous serum, you can actually put it in a freezer, you can shake it, uh, you can let it get room temperature, it all stays pretty much the same. But what we found with uh, PRP and trying to make a PRP eye drop is that these drops coagulate uh, very easily. If you put it in a freezer, it'll clot. If you shake it, uh, it will clot. Uh, if you expose it too much to room temperature, it will clot. Uh, so what we had to figure out, and then if you pick the wrong vehicle, uh, it will clot. So a lot of our time in the first year or two was trying to figure out uh, what's the best way to handle PRP so that it's actually a treatment that we could use. And this just shows kind of a, a picture of what happens to PRP just kind of standing there and, uh, and the 
how it clots very quickly. And this is whether you use a anticoagulant like citrate when you're extracting uh, the PRP. So some of the experiments that we did is we tried different vehicles. So we would take PRP, put it in different vehicles and see what would happen and we would actually uh, do this in a fridge, do this at room temperature, do this in a freezer uh, with all these different things. And you can see this was basically one of our first attempts and all of them clock, 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 clock with all the vehicles that we found in books uh, for autologous serum. Um, and we finally, after trying several different things, we finally found a vehicle that uh, wouldn't clot. Uh, and we found that keeping it in the fridge instead of the freezer uh, wouldn't uh, clot it, and that not shaking it uh, wouldn't clot. So now for the last, I would say, three and a half years, we've been able to stably handle PRP, give it to patients, uh, and we still get some clotting. I would say about 1% of patients still get some clotting, but usually it's because they haven't followed uh, our rules. Uh, when using their PRP. The current PRP system, and I have no uh, financial relationship to them other than we're doing a research project for them, is uh, this genius PRP. So first PRP systems we're using were about this big. These systems are getting smaller and smaller and more sophisticated. So here you see uh, this high speed spin. When you were doing uh, autologous serum, you were getting about 1,000, uh, 2,000 uh, revolutions per minute. This is much, much faster, more about 5,000 uh, revolutions per minute to get this high spin in terms of getting, uh, getting more PRP and uh, less uh, RVCs. So where are we using this? So uh, you're going to hear my lecture later on this afternoon on intense pulse light for dry eye. So we have a lot of systems in place to treat patients meibomian gland dysfunction, we have systems in place to treat Sjogren's, uh, but what we don't have is uh, these patients that come in that we get their meibomian gland dysfunction taken care of and they're still coming to our clinic complaining of pain. So my theory on this is that these patients have had such long-standing uh, inflammation that their nerves uh, have become uh, abnormal, um, super sensitive, and even though we've taken care of their dry eye, they're still uh, having pain. So we started using PRP in the hopes that the nerve growth factor will help regenerate uh, those nerves. And that's where it's working the best. We're not seeing a lot of difference in the uh, signs in terms of if you have a patient with meibomian gland dysfunction, you give them PRP, that's not going to uh, improve their meibomian gland dysfunction. But where we're finding it is, and we've tried everything for pain and dry, dry eye patients, now Trexone, anything that you've, that's out there in terms of studies we've tried, this has seemed to work uh, the best. Uh, and how we use it is uh, usually with about 60 cc's, we can get about 6 cc's of PRP. We do a one week loading dose of QID. Uh, then from there we go BID till it runs out. That'll last them uh, with the vehicle that we're putting it in. It'll last them uh, two, two months to two and a half months. Uh, but we've had several patients that are using it as their dry eye drop. That it makes their eyes feel so good uh, that even though they're not having any problems, they decide that they want to continue using uh, PRP as their dry eye drop. And there are some anti-inflammatory mediators in uh, PRP and what you see and uh, what you see in autologous serum. Uh, but we, and we're doing a study right now, we're not seeing that these drops improve uh, MGD by themselves. Uh, and we have some special cases that I want to uh, show you. So we have these patients that have this haze. So this uh, is a patient that had PRK, uh, that had Haze post PRK, steroids would make the uh, haze go away. As soon as you took them off the steroids, the haze would come back. So what we started doing on these patients is we actually take down the epithelium, we uh, put them on PRP immediately after the procedure, contact lens uh, while their epithelium uh, 
grows back. Uh, no steroids, and what we're finding is this two and a half months of PRP actually gets rid of this uh, post uh, PRK haze, and now we're getting more and more patients that uh, we're doing it on. You have to take down the epithelium uh, to get rid of this uh, haze when you do this uh, procedure. Another uh, way that we're using it is just like the other surgeons are using PRP for knees and uh, for skin, for skin resurfacing. Uh, we have patients that, this is a patient of uh, my wife's, that uh, Dr. Melissa Toy is in the audience, who took down a basal cell carcinoma, uh, wasn't healing very well. She had uh, two re-ops uh, and we decided to go ahead and try PRP. And as you can see, a uh, patient healed very quickly uh, just after seven days of uh, PRP drops. And what PRP provides you is a scaffolding uh, effect uh, with this uh, fibrin network uh, that allowed that epithelium to heal over and cause a bridge of healing so that that lid margin can uh, completely heal. Uh, PRP is not only being used in our clinic as eye drops, but it's also being used when we do skin resurfacing, doing CO2 laser, and then using PRP uh, right after to promote quicker uh, healing. So the hypothesis here is PRP accelerates the repair process, improves tissue function, uh, reduces pain, uh, and prevents uh, complications. This is one of the topics that I cover in my book, Dry Disease Treatment in the Year uh, 2020. And then if you have any questions, we actually don't give out the information in terms of how we make the PRP. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is we want you to come and see actually uh, how to do it because it is a, a pretty sophisticated process that we, we'd have to teach you hands-on uh, or else you're going to run into the same complications that we did with, uh, with the clotting. Thank you very much.